Morning, welcome to today's video. I'm here with miserable Nick. You may remember Nick from previous episodes of the vlog, such as Chris riding to Paris in nine hours and us racing around the map for 24 hours. He's wearing a flannel shirt. My new toy is this. Based on Dustin Klein's sweet recommendation, uh, in your words, using nature's gimbal, your head. So, so I'm legit gonna ride around with this one. I'm gonna ride around with this in my mouth and see what the footage looks like. It does look ridiculous. Dustin put it, made his black. He made his black. So I'm gonna use today's ride as a chance to get some test footage from this device. It's a grill mount for the GoPro, so it's a multi-use mount. The nice thing is you can put it in your mouth and use your head as a gimbal. It appears to be raining, Nick. Out of nowhere. Unbelievable. Don't gravel riders with shirts like that. Just ride in it. Uh, no, no, I don't think they do. Oh. That's that's a different type of different type of riding. That's touring. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Touring. <laughs> Triple at the front. Good for the plants, though, isn't it? We've had a week of sun. We need a drink. So as a few of you already know, I've been testing out a few different gimbals and stabilization methods for cameras fixed to the bike. I'm having a bit of a nightmare with it. I'll talk about that in a future episode. I did find this. Uh, Dustin Klein made a video about it. Yeah, like that. It also makes the GoPro a little bit more stable just because you can hold on to it, get shots of people's wheels and stuff like that. It's got like two squishy bits on so it doesn't hurt your teeth. I don't know how the footage is gonna come out because you can't see the GoPro when you've got it attached to this. Luckily, there's a little scale drawn on it so if you can work out kind of where you have your head and correlate it to the numbers then you can recreate it pretty much done all the gravel for today we're going to ride back now on the road and get a few more shots using this it should be even more stable on the road but i think it was working pretty well when we were on the more technical descents so i guess we'll see how it comes out what are you doing miserable nick just creating some engaging content top 10 worst trees we've ever stood under oh what number is this uh this is probably probably like in the middle like it's all right if you're standing it and the rain's coming from that way. What are you comparing it to? Because it's the only tree we've ever stood on uh, together, I think. Oh, I was talking about it from a personal point of view. I just... You refer to yourself as we. Me and my followers. Oh. Keeping that. Do you want some help? Uh, we can probably flag down a car to help hold your bike. Oh, I've got water all over my lens. So the grill is quite usable actually when you've got it in your mouth and you're doing some descending. Uh, I thought it was going to be a real problem and breathing would be an issue but it's okay. It's quite squashy so you can bite quite hard on it. It doesn't feel like it's going to bounce out of your mouth. Breathing you can still do. You can even kind of talk because you're holding it with your back teeth so you can still shout directions at the person in front of you. And yeah, pretty impressed. I'm just intrigued to see how the footage is going to come out. A gronked. So gravel bonked is different to a road. Gronk. It's different to road cycling because gravel is really different to everything. Like road cycling is so last decade this is even gravel have different types of bonking you haven't got the standard bonk food though you bought polos no free pastels oh yeah okay fine polos, those are just polos. In, in lockdown i got really into uh like luncheon meats your pates your corned beefs that's it really pates and deli ham for what for just like eating and stuff like every now and then i'll be like i'm really hungry I'm gonna have some pate on toast. And then um, last week was all about corned beef. I got really, yeah, I've got, uh, so next week I might have some, oh fuck. Where are you, you know going with this? Had, do you know what I haven't had in ages? I know I have had an omelet. I'm gonna have a ham and cheese omelet. That's what I've done in lockdown. Had a bonk stop, Nick's gone, 
he's got a long way to ride home. Luckily, I don't have quite so far. I'm looking forward to checking out this footage. Hey, at least Nick's got a tailwind. It is so, 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 so windy today. Not gonna lie, I bonked pretty hard. You may have noticed that I'm wearing a new jersey because Atticus have just released another piece of their new kit. There's also a matching cap. If you wanna have a look and order some, the factory's back up and running and they have stock. <coughs> just checked out the footage. I'm actually stunned. I thought it would look nice and stable but move around a little bit because surely your head's moving around. How does it look that good? Obviously over extended periods of time having that thing in your mouth is going to be a bit annoying but for short clips, just a few minutes at a time, that's amazing. Okay, let's give this thing a proper review. First off, disclaimer, I'm not being paid to say this, I have nothing to do with get stoked the pro standard the pro standard they did not send this to me for free i bought this with my own money from amazon a couple of days ago it cost 30 pounds 35 with postage i think this is the little box it comes with super simple with some stickers and a piece of paper advertising some other stuff that they do and saying go and follow them on instagram he's a one-man band company cool it is literally one piece you attach it to the gopro with a normal screw that your GoPro should come with. Based on that, it should fit pretty much any action camera. If I hadn't have smashed my DJI one, I would have tested it with that as well. But for the purpose of today's test, I was using a GoPro Hero 7. So there is stabilization inside the GoPro Hero 7. I think it was the first camera where they did proper internal stabilization that's actually worth using. I think they call it hyper smooth. The Hero 8 apparently is better. It also has a better image quality as well. So bear that in mind when you're looking at my footage. It could be slightly better if I just bought a newer camera. This one works kind of okay. It's a little bit temperamental. Battery life is not great. In terms of settings, I had this set on wide, not super view or super wide or whatever it's called, and not linear, just the one in the middle. I'm shooting flat and then color grading a little bit afterwards. I was then shooting in 24 frames a second. And for most of it, I had the GoPro inside the cage attached to this and uh, holding it in my mouth. There are a couple of shots where I was holding it down low. This was actually really useful to hold onto as a little handle. Uh, just made things a little bit easier and a bit more secure. If you've ever tried to hold a GoPro without anything attached to it, it is really annoying because you end up touching the screen and then you get smudgy fingerprints over the screen. Not what you want. That's the biggest problem usually when you're holding GoPros handheld. Gimbals, like this one which I'm currently in the process of sending back. I'll explain more in another video. It's big, it's heavy, you have to charge it. I had to put it basically in front of me on the bike and it was working really, really well, but it's delicate, takes too much time to set up. And let's face it, when you're on rides, you don't wanna be carrying around an extra kilo of stuff. It's just annoying. Last option that I see is fixed mounts. Now there are some interesting ones. Uh, I've been using the Nut R, Nut hyphen R. Uh, that's one that attaches to your quick release and that's really good. But now I've switched to through axles on all of my bikes. I haven't been using it as much. The problem with most fixed mounts, in my opinion, is that all of the footage looks the same. It's a little bit boring. Everyone's seen it a million times. If you mount it on your handlebars or just under your stem, it looks super, super low down, way lower than you'd think. Then because it's attached to the bike, you get loads of vibrations. You get some weird image movement and a few artifacts and it's just not something I wanna be dealing with. I really think this thing is the best of all three worlds and it costs 30 quid. If you break it, it doesn't matter. When you got it in your mouth like that, it, it's not quite at eye level, but it's getting close to it. So it gives you that really desirable look that you'll see in guys like Terry Barrington's videos. He uses a uh, mount on top of his helmet. So he gets like a real video game style point of view. This comes close. And if you're gonna be doing like an extended long bike ride without any setup, I think it's absolutely brilliant. I have absolutely no idea if these things are still in stock. I'm pretty sure the Amazon link I was on was a UK based one, but I'll put a link down below. I'll do some digging, see if I can find any more and uh, put a link in the description if you wanna buy one. Again, not being paid to say this, I just think it's a wicked product. Thank you, Dustin, for pointing this out in your video. I'll put a link to his channel down below if you wanna see that too. Loads of good cycling content on there. I'm gonna to cut today's video now. As always, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.